Hey viewers, today again about the Sovol SV08, my first 3D printer. I now have 225 hours of print time with the longest consecutive print of 16 hours and 10 minutes and I went through 1958.6 meters of filament. That's a bit. What can I say about the machine? It's solid. Can you print straight out of the box? Yeah. You can. Um, anyone who knows how to use a screwdriver and connect an extension cord can buy the thing, put it together and start printing. It's really pretty simple. Would I recommend the printer to other people? It depends and I will get to that later. Generally speaking, those this new generation of printers is actually really more a tool than a project in and on itself. Older printers were a lot more fiddly. Um, this one, like I said, pretty solid straight out of the box. You get great prints without having to change settings or fuck around with it. However, it is a cheaper version of the Voron. And as far as I know, the Voron 2.4 is a pretty good printer because you can essentially spec the thing to the highest possible standards because you source all the parts separately. This one cuts some corners and that brings me to the point why I said would I recommend it? Depends. If you want to just print stuff for yourself and like have one printer and get your feet wet in the 3D printing world and you still want to have the capability of building large objects like helmets or larger models or something like that, yeah, I would recommend the, the printer. Absolutely. Hands down. No issues. Quality is good, especially if you get a deal somewhere on Amazon or wherever you source it from. It's a dead solid machine. Would I recommend it to someone who wants to start a print farm and says, oh, hey, it's cheap. Let's buy 15 of them. No. Um, absolutely not like hands down not not at all not even close fuck it that's how much not and the reason is inconsistency i don't really know why that is something i haven't figured out yet um a lot of people were complaining about the whole set axis alignment or set axis offset inconsistency. I don't have that issue. Like my first layer is always perfect. Bad adhesion is great unless I fuck something up myself in the settings. However, there are weird inconsistencies within the print from one piece to another. Let me show you what I mean. This is two times the exact same piece printed at the same time. It's just a mirror image of each other. At the same time, on the same print bed. And I don't know if you can see that, but right up here, there are these tiny little overhangs. Yeah, there's some stringing and stuff, but it did print them. It's fine. I mean, this is a little bit fucky, but that is, I don't know, it's from the model. Now you have the same piece printed at the same time on the other side. And it's completely fucked up. Like, totally bullshit. The same settings, same day, right next to each other. And that happens a lot. I have some more examples. I printed this Caesar bust. And there were some overhangs. Left hand side, nice. Right hand side, stringy and shitty. And I don't know why. <clears throat> So those are weird inconsistencies. Another example, these parts printed next to each other at the exact same time. This bit, actually quite decent, quite nice. What the fuck? Just because the one is on the left and the other one is on the right? What's the deal here? I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's not the printer, but so far, I think it's the printer because the inconsistency is quite consistent. So therefore, if you want to start a print farm, maybe this is not your machine. But that being said, it's a solid machine, specifically for the price. Even if you don't get a deal, it's still a pretty damn solid machine. 
and you can build you have a large build volume 350 by 350 by 345 millimeters to me personally that was one of the deciding factors and i will not get into the the printer prints at xyz millimeters per second blah 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 like there's a ton of reviews where people actually go into those values i couldn't care less it means to me as much as a zero to 60 time on a car i don't give a shit uh, the thing needs to work in everyday use and for the most part it does without too much interference actually without interference at all <clears throat> the only thing i would recommend but that's probably true for every printer get the standard settings from your manufacturer um, and then go into your slicer and adjust the settings according to the filament you use like i have this really cheap filament changing the settings according to the filament specs from the manufacturer and the slicer setup and slicer test prints it made a huge difference in quality even though the inconsistencies are still there then there's another thing the large print volume yeah it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because the printer is fucking wobbly <laughs> quite wobbly which then means if you have a larger print like this one <clears throat> and the printer starts printing up here the whole thing shakes which of course interferes with the surface quality let me show you what I mean And see it here, prints nicely, prints nicely, prints nicely, until it gets to the top where it started wobbling like hell. And you get these artifacts. See that? All around. Because the thing sways like this. And the printer can't offset that. It can have probably the best freaking software in the world. It wouldn't make a difference. If you accelerate a print head super fast left and right and it is an aluminum frame attached to a aluminum reinforced plastic base, but only on four corners without cross braces, it will shake. And my printer sits on the floor. If you put that thing now on a table, it will shake even more. Be aware of that. Sometimes just probably turn down the speed. Makes a huge difference. In this case, it doesn't really matter. It needs to get painted later on anyways. Overall, actually a really good experience. <laughs> Unless I fucked up. And I fucked up a bit. I did the whole setup for the print filament. Um, PLA in that case, because that's what I started with. I don't have an enclosure yet for printing ABS that will probably come in the next video because that's the next plan so uh, I went into Orca slicer the recommended slicer for the printer and I did certain setups and tests and it was great and then the software asked me if I want to um, keep the settings not the settings I put in manually those ones you save yourself like flow rate and uh, hot end temperature and those kind of things no apparently print settings and um, I didn't read so I just said sure click and then I printed something I had to print it twice and let me show you if you can spot the difference That's right. One version was printed normally, and the other version was um, printed in base mode without infill. Because that was apparently the setting I copied from the test I ran in Orca Slicer to the next print, which was this one. I was wondering how it could print this in three hours 
but I was like, hey, it's a fast printer. I essentially printed a balloon. Pretty stable though, so layer adhesion is not really a problem, and since it is a zeppelin, uh, maybe I actually can <laughs> glue it together, put some helium in it and see if it floats. Oh, I just throw it in the garbage. Yeah. Then there are some other mess ups, you know. I positioned shit incorrectly on the print bed. Yeah, that was me. Um, lost the bad adhesion. You will find a really funny um, short in my on my channel how that came about. Yeah, this is my that's my box of shame. Fucked up prints. Um, Eiffel Tower without a tip. That's where the wobbly thing came in. Wobble wobble wobble. Tip didn't stick properly because too much wobble. Fuck off. Yeah. But I guess that's uh that's all part of the fun adventure and the hobby of 3D printing, and I'm okay with that. I mean, everyone has to learn, everyone makes mistakes. Overall, as I said at the beginning, it's a pretty solid machine. I have fun with it. You can print great models. Everything you saw so far, you will find that all on Thingiverse. I'm gonna probably put the links in the description below for... That one was from the... what you see behind me there, this is parts for the Battlestar Galactica, that's the Hindenburg Zeppelin, and the Eiffel Tower, and that is all from Thingiverse. I didn't design anything myself yet. Part of the reason is because I switched to Linux now full-time. I still have a backup version of Windows 10 because I have a SketchUp Pro on there. Um, I have to learn new 3D modeling software on Linux. And then there's not another Another word of caution for Linux users. Um, if you want to get into 3D printing, and it is regardless of, of which printer you want to buy, if it's the Sovol SV08 or Bamboo Lab or whatever, make sure the slicer software that supports your printer actually works in your Linux distro. Um, I had a hell of a time to get the Orca slicer working under Ubuntu 24.4. Uh, 24.04, sorry. Um, you find on GitHub a lot of discussions about other people having the same issue with Bamboo Studio because they are both the, essentially the same core software, just different branches of it. Um, with Windows it works great, apparently, without any issues. Then there's also the uh, fix the model functionality in Orca Slicer and Bamboo Studio. That functionality is not available under Linux. Um, has something to do with because it is based on a Windows service, um, that a Microsoft service that is like part of Windows 10, 11 and in that form apparently not available under Linux. Um, there are ways around it. And I also had to learn GitHub is not as scary as I thought it is. It's actually quite nice. It seems like a less toxic and more helpful um, environment for people who actually want to solve problems. Unlike Reddit sometimes. But Reddit is a bit more fun most of the time. However. Um, yeah. I'm happy with my purchase, and if you want to get your feet wet and you want to build big things with a 3D printer, give the Sobol SV08 a shot. Why not? And then maybe subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it with other people, or say, fuck it, I don't. That's fine. See you next time.